so much. Uh, appreciate that, uh, Mr. Julius. That it really means a lot. And uh, I think uh, I will uh, let uh, Mr. Ndegwa uh, uh, take over from now, and then maybe he can also introduce uh, the, his colleague from LA. Thank you, Geoffrey. And thanks to Abbasid Dagashero, the Deputy Chief of Mission, Julius Balgoret, our Minister at the Embassy, and my colleague, Mr. Jelan Mungare, all the way from Los Angeles. Pleased we are okay. We have two people from Eastern and the other side also. And to the Kenyan community in St. Louis for organizing this, this good event. I am the immigration attache at the Kenyan Embassy in Washington, D.C. And generally, an immigration attache ordinarily is the head of consular, the head of consular desk in the mission. And our work is very simple. We make sure that the Kenyans resident in the U.S. are properly documented. That is from birth. I don't want to mention the other head. And they also, we make sure that the foreigners who are going to Kenya are properly documented in terms of issuing of visas. Maybe before I go ahead, I can ask Mr. Gerard Mungare to show his face, say hi, and then I can be able to continue. I'm Jambo Nyote, uh, hello. I don't know whether I'm uh, being heard or seen. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, Nashkuru, really appreciate being uh, invited. And just like uh, you've been told, uh, protocol demands that I talk less since Mr. Ndegwe has already spoken. <laughs> Lakini, greetings from Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jared Mugari. Suffice is also to mention that we also have an immigration office in New York. We have our colleague, Mr. Wilfredo Amera. Unfortunately, he could not be able to join, but the next time he will be there. So for the consular desk in US, we have three offices. We have New York, we have Washington DC, and we also have Los Angeles. But for the issuance of passport, it's only in Washington DC. But for the other services, you can be able to get them in the other, the other two consulates. Maybe if you don't mind, and if Julius, you can allow me, maybe we can be able to share the web say, website because it has a lot of information. And in fact, Abbasi Dagashero mentioned about it. We have yes, 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 you can go ahead, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have realized that most of the callers from the office do not know where to get the correct information. And that information is usually on the Webassy website. And we have also realized that we have so many Kenyans in the United States. I don't know you are Tari Geoffrey for the total number of Kenyans in the US is how many people? I think they say it's of a hundred. Is it 50,000 or so more? So what usually happens when report to the office at nine and then maybe up to five and you assume like 10,000 Kenyans are calling at the same time. Sometimes we cannot be able to pick all the calls from the Kenya. Not that we don't want to, but the sheer number of calls. So the embassy website can be a stop, stop gap measure. And if you have been able to get it, maybe you can share it so that I can be able to show our participants where sometimes we can be able to get the, the information. The website is www.kenyaembassydc.org. So on the embassy website, we have a link on, we have a link on up there, yes. We have about us, about Kenya, we have consular, commercial diplomacy, tourism, education, diaspora, rings, media, and contact us. 
in our section with my colleague Gerard, we deal with consular. And if you go down in the Dropbox, you see the appointment link for in-person services due to COVID-19. These days we are not allowing walk-in services. Initially we used to allow, but because of social distancing, any person needing a service, we tell him or her to go to the appointment link to, uh, to book an appointment so that we can be able to enhance social distancing as per the CDC rules and as per the Washington DC regulations. If we can go down there, you can see the issues of passport, visa, certificate, additional services down there. Maybe we can go back to passports. Anybody wanting to apply for passport, you can go to the passport link, click. If you can be able to click, it is going to give you to the link on how to apply for your passport. We will not go much, but if you can see the, the first line there that it says, you can now apply for new passport or replace your current passport through the e-citizen portal, www.e-citizen. If you can click on e-citizen, maybe a little bit. This is where you can now be able to apply for your passport. For those persons who applied via passports after 2010, they already have an e-citizen account. So all what is required for them is to sign in. And for those who have been here for long and they do not have an e-citizen account, they are supposed to go to that part on create an account. Service is to mention that when you are creating an account, the system does not recognize a US number or any foreign number. So it is imperative that those people who are applying for a passport should call in their relatives back home in order to be, the relative can go and get a new safari brain that has not been used. Because if you use your mom's brain, if you use your dad's brain, already your dad will have registered and the system is not going to recognize. But if a new line is created, then that one can be able to allow you to go in. Or the alternative is for you to try to create an account. Then if it cannot go through and it is asking you for a code, you are supposed to write to support at ecitizen.go.ke and they are going to assist you to create the account. But the easiest method is to get a Safari right from Kenya. Then from there, you can be able to open your e-citizen account. Yeah. Where it is written there, create an account, that's where you are supposed to click. And then the system will, will log you in. No, where you are, where you've put the cursor, this one is for foreign residents. Yeah, there was the other one for Kenya citizens. So that's where you fill in your details. You put in your ID number and as you can see from the mobile number is it's a plus 254 number. Maybe we can go back to the Rincon. We go back to consular service. We go back again. Okay, when we are there, as you can see below there, we have written the, the fees chargeable. No, still where you are. Maybe you can go back to the website. There. We have we have a column down there written the passport type and the fees chargeable. As you can see, the cost of a 32 page passport is 4,500, all the way down to the last passport, which is 12,050. As you can also see from the steps of application, we have another column for the requirements, we have another column for the notes, and how you prepare for the biometrics and how you can be able to pick for your passport 
operator on. All those things are enumerated there in the system. Maybe we go back to we go back to consular service. Yes, passport again. Then down there we have the Kenya National Identity Card. If you can click on it. If you can go down a little bit, a little down again, those are the requirements for applying for a Kenyan ID. And as you can see, the first item that we have there is first time applicants. That is those people who've never held an ID. And then down there, number two, we have maybe those people who have lost a Kenyan ID. For the Kenyan ID, you can be able to apply from the Kenyan embassy in Washington, D.C., or at the Kenyan consulate in Los Angeles. We have Mr. Gerard Mungare there. If you go to his office also, or you come to D.C., we can be able to assist you. All the requirements are tabulated there. Maybe we go back again to consular. Then you can go down after ID, we have the emergency certificate. If you can click on it. The emergency certificate is given to Kenyans who have lost their passports in the US and they have an urgent need of going home to Kenya. If you click there, you can be able to get details on what you can be able to do and you can be able to send your documents either to Washington, either to New York, or either to LA, and we can be able to give you the one-way travel document. Ordinarily, if you, said, if you send your documents by overnight, I think from any part in the US, if you send your document today, we can be able to get them tomorrow. And since you have put a safe address return envelope, we are able to return it the following day. So within a week from Monday to Friday, you have gotten your emergency travel document, either from DC, New York, or from LA. If we can still go back again, consider again, then click on certificate down there where you have, yes. You don't have to click right stick there. This is the birth certificate for Kenyan children born abroad. Every country issues birth certificates with citizens. American citizens born in Kenya are given American birth certificates. Even as in Kenya, all children born abroad, we give them birth certificates for Kenyan children born abroad. The advantage of that birth certificate is that once you're in Kenya, when the other people are producing the Kenyan birth certificate, you also produce yours. If you are buying RAD, instead of using the American birth certificate, you can be able to use the Kenyan birth certificate. If you are in the education institution like the University of Nairobi, instead of registering as a foreigner, the birth certificate will identify you as a Kenyan citizen. And it is the start of maybe if you are supposed to get a passport, if you are supposed to get all those other Kenyan documents, that is the starting, that is the starting point. Maybe if you go back to here, you have the visa services, certificate, additional services, we can click on additional services. That is yes. On the additional services, we have what is known as the J1 waiver. I think majority of the students here know about the J-1 waiver, whereby you are supposed to present a letter to the embassy so that we can waiver you going back to Kenya in order to be extended that issue to do with the waiver. The requirements are indicated there. I think those are some of the good things that we can be able to get from the website and the which if you take time and you go through all what is enumerated in the website, ordinarily you don't even have to call. For the passports, we have opened, but for limited services. This is because of corona, corona issue and the issue of 
social distancing, we are not yet fully open, we are operating with appointments. So with that small presentation, maybe I can ask my colleague, maybe if I have left something out, Gerard, and then you return to Julius. Yes, my very humble request uh, to all who are in attendance, and uh, when you get a chance to talk to others who might not be present in this forum, is uh, for, for, for Kenyans to read what is in the website and to go beyond that so that where there is mention, for example, of some constitutional issues, they also familiarize themselves. Sometimes we sound like we are insensitive or we are impatient when we have people making inquiries and when we tell them, have you read, have you bothered to familiarize yourself? We start having tensions growing. But the truth of the matter is that uh, as a patriotic Kenyan, you should also, we should appreciate that we have certain rights and we have certain obligations. Uh, I was taught a while back that uh, in, in, in the areas of law, there are only two sets of laws, tacit law and express law. There is that which you don't have to know, but it's still the law. So sometimes we have people questioning uh, us about some areas and when we refer them to, to, to other readings, especially from the constitution or the acts that operationalize the constitution or the regulations that operationalize the acts of parliament, we, we start having a mini political debate and ours is to serve you. Uh, so I think that's all I can add for now. Um, and hopefully if there are any questions, uh, we are ready. But uh, let me not forget to, to applaud Wendy. A few days ago, we, I was invited to another forum and I was very excited to talk to Kenyans. But the moment I greeted them in Swahili, uh, in, the, the person who was actually moderating was uh, surprised me by confessing that her Swahili is not very good and tried to encourage me to talk more English than Swahili. And I was like, do I continue or what happened? Swahili is indeed one of our official languages. Some of these explanations uh, that we are talking about uh, are also supposed to be explained in Swahili. It might not be functional when in the diaspora, but let's not forget where we have come from. Thank you very much. Good, that is awesome. Um, I, I so think we give it back to Julius. Yes. Yeah, I see Ndegwa is uh, in knows protocol. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, maybe uh, I'll ask them one, one question which I have. You, I received so many, so many times, so many times uh, from people I know. Uh, I see some, some of my friends like Diana and the husband. Hi. Uh, well, this question is about dual citizenship. The issue of losing, gaining. Uh, please, if you can explain that in one minute, I'll be very happy. And then I'll hand over back to Geoffrey. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Julius. The issue of dual citizenship is mentioned in the Kenyan Constitution 2010. That is at Article 14, Article 14, 1, 2, 3, Article 15, and at Article 16. And they also under the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Act 2011, and the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Legislation. 2012. In a nutshell, what the rule says is that anybody who was born before 27th August 1987 and became a foreigner or acquired the other citizenship before 27th August 2010. You are born before 27th August 1987, and you acquired the other citizenship before 27th August 2010, you lost your Kenyan citizenship. This is because under the repealed 
Constitution of Kenya, section 97, I think it was an article 97, it was saying that dual citizenship was allowed until the 23rd birthday. If you attained the 23rd birthday and you had not renounced the other citizenship, then you are losing the Kenyan citizenship automatically without further reverence to you. Mr. Mungare has talked about the law. I am trying to read what the law was saying under the repealed constitution. That's why anybody who was born before 27th August 1987, if you add 23 years or 23rd birthday, it ends on 27th August 2010. So if you know that you are Kenyan born before 27th August 1987 and you acquired the other citizenship before 27th August 2010, note that you ceased to be a Kenyan citizen. Anybody born after 27th August 1987, by the time we come to 27th August 2010, the person had not attained the 23rd birthday, and therefore the person had not lost Kenyan citizenship, and all what that person is supposed to do is just to apply to declare dual citizenship description. Anybody born before 27th August 1987, but became an American before promulgation of the new constitution, you are supposed to regain a do dual declaration. Anybody who became an American citizen after 27th August 2010, that is after the promulgation of the new constitution, you only need to do dual declaration. If you remember where we were, where we had the the consular that is on the website, consular passport and citizenship, there is a drop down on dual declaration where you can get the relevant application for. Thank you very much, Judith. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Uh, so back to you, uh, Geoffrey, and uh, you can uh, request people to ask any question they might have. Uh, we'll uh, a few more minutes, thank you. No, thank you so much. That was very helpful. At least even just walking us through, that was really, really good, Mr. Ndegwa and Jared. Uh, Jared, uh, I think for now, I'm going to give uh, maybe two, two or three people questions, and then we go to the next uh, part of the program. I think the youth are ready for the next part. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we keep the stick to the program. Uh, anybody who has a question, you can go ahead and ask. Um, Um, would you just unmute and mute yourself? Yes, I do have one question. Gerald uh, Mungare, I need him to check his uh, private in inbox text. Okay. Okay. That is fine. Then, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, somebody was asking a question. And then, uh, as we, uh, that, that's the question. Yes. Uh, uh, this is Nicholas, and uh, I thank you very much for this uh, um, uh, time that we are, uh, we are getting some time to learn about uh, many things that are coming from Kenya. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for this wonderful work that you're doing for us. Now, you have talked about dual citizenship declaration. I wanted to know, are there some consequences if you don't... Uh, you don't declare the dual citizenship? I don't know whether maybe the best would be to take a, a couple of questions so that, you know, they can be answered in one, in one move. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, that one, I know that we may have taken that already. So anybody else want to throw up, up a question there? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and unfortunately, I may not be seen. Uh, I'm driving. Uh, my name is uh, Wilfred. I hope you can hear me, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I wish to thank the gentlemen for uh, the professional way in which they are handling uh, the meeting and the questions that we have. Uh, I'm just a little bit concerned with uh, the e-citizen portal because uh, like one of the gentlemen told us, it's not uh, made to accommodate a foreign number. Now that has been an issue. and I know you have had to answer that question why uh, it cannot be made in a way that it can take a foreign number. The reason I ask this, and uh, I feel it's a little bit odd, is because the passport is one of the main documents that people apply in the e-citizen. And when you're applying for a passport, either you are planning to go out of the country, in that case, you'll probably have a foreign number, or already you are outside the country. So again, in that case, you have a foreign number. I don't know, but uh, just how hard it is to set the system in such a way that it can take a foreign number. I mean, we do uh, many other applications in this country, even in Kenya, and there's always the option of putting just a number, uh, the, the list of countries, then uh, you select the country, and then it allows you to put the number. I don't know why that cannot be done on the uh, e-citizen portal, because uh, personally, I had a real problem with it. I had to go look for a Kenyan number. And again, let me say this. If I give a, a Kenyan number, it could be a sister, a brother, or a friend. That's a portal, or that, uh, that's like my inbox. So all the information that I have there is easily accessible by another person. I mean, just how hard is it to put a, a provision that I can use either a Kenyan number or any other number for that matter? I'm just concerned about that. But uh, other than that, uh, I like the way the gentlemen uh, addressed the issues that we have. And in a way, I would also like to thank you guys because uh, sometimes we feel like we are left out. You know, there has been so many issues that we talk about every day. And we feel like uh, when you are out in the diaspora, you are just by yourself. But if we have such a meeting like we are doing now, then it makes us feel connected. It makes us feel that there are people who are actually there and who are minding about our welfare, whether we are outside the country or in our country, that is uh, our country of birth. So thank you for that. I hope you get to address that question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Winford. Um, one more question, and then we can have them answered. I, I have one question, uh, Geoffrey. This is Walter Siganga. Um, and actually it's a two-part question. One is the timeline now for the, for the new passports. Um, now that we have had COVID, everything seems to be getting moved back, but we're not sure they, there had been a deadline. So if you could address that. And the other one is the issue of Washington DC being the only place you can get it. Um, do you have any, any plans to maybe come outside like St. Louis or some other place wh which is closer to Kenyans? Because I have, I have uh, you know, the cost of going to Washington DC um, for a passport to, to get your new passport can be very high. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your kind comments, uh, Wilfred, uh, and also the questions which are very, very, uh, you know, well put. Um, so Ndegwa, Gerald, uh, either of you can answer and the other can amplify. Thank you so much. So thank you very much. Yeah, I would start by the question from Nicholas on dual citizenship. Yes, the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Regulation 2012 says that you should create your dual citizen after three years of becoming the other citizenship, of acquiring the other citizenship. But currently, the government is not following up very much, but you never know the time the government might start saying that all those people who have not declared there is this and this and that. Service I can give you as somebody who had not regained and who came from the US. What people usually do is that they usually have the Kenyan passport and they also have the American passport. So when you are leaving the US, you live with the American passport. When you are entering Kenya, you hide the American passport, you enter with Kenyan passport. So what the person had done was to send documents. I think it was not document, it was even a container full of goods from America. 
and from here they use the American passport. Naraibo in Kenya, when he went to clear the goods, he went to clear with the American passport. And from the KRA, the person was told to produce the original passport with the relevant stamp that he used to send them. So when he went to immigration, he was asked about his citizenship status, it was found out that he had the people we are talking about regaining. Those who were born before 1987, they acquired American citizenship in the year 2000. But at the end of the day, he had to pay a lot of money at the port for something that he should have done a long time ago and of which he was saying that he was ignorant of that part. So my request is let's do what we supposed to do and at the right time. On the issue of the e-season portal and the issue of asking for the Kenya numbers, let me start by admitting that the embassy is the, we are just the users and not the developers. And the question that Mr. Karanja is asking, since the e-passport system was rolled out at the embassy, and we have also been able to our bosses about the challenges that the people in the diaspora are going through. But maybe I can also throw a question to, the, to all of you who are here. The issue of Amazon account, do we have to use American number as a security system or can I also use a Kenya number? I think the people who developed the system, Kenya number as a security system, although I cannot, it's not something that I can be able to support. But nevertheless, Karanja, we've had you. We have communicated to Nairobi. And I think Gerard has noted and will still communicate again as to the challenges that people are going through. However, the embassy in one of the requirements where we had the passport, we had tried to find a way out of giving the rings that you can be able to call Nairobi when you have a charge. That's why in the website we have put the email support at ecitizen.go.ke. If you have a charge in creating the account and you write to that email support at ecitizen.go.ke, somebody in Nairobi is going to sort you out. You don't have to get a Kenya number. Then for the timelines for the analog passport, remember the minister in charge of immigration had said that the, the analog passport will be valid until 1st of March 2021. That's next year. We take cognizance of the fact that we've had COVID-19 and people are not able to travel. The border even between Canada and the US, between Mexico and the US was crossed. Other people from the whole of the South America continent, they have been calling us, asking us the way forward. So I think we have created a report. The ambassador has a report and I'm trying to petition Nairobi to see whether, whether the dead rain can be extended. On the issue of Washington being the only center to apply for e-passport, those sentiments have been raised. We are talking about US, but from the missions abroad, remember that you can only get the passport from Washington, from London, from Paris, from Bari, from Dubai, and from Pretoria. We've had other people also, maybe from as far as away as Australia. We have China as a continent. We have India, not China as a continent, but China, which has a large population of Kenyans. We have India that has also a large population of Kenyans. Those issues have been raised and they have been forwarded to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs so that at least they can be able to know where else we can be able to open another station. Maybe Gerard, you can assist me. Yes, uh, 
mine is uh, tomorrow let's echo what my colleague mr ndegwa has said but using a different shade when you talk about passport internationally there's what we call integrity of the document the moment you make it very very easy and i'm not saying that it should be made difficult for kenyans uh, you open yourself to abuse of the systems and he has as he has questioned where would you feel more comfortable when you have a number that we are we are in control of and can actually regulate or a number that we have no control over we appreciate the levels of uh, technological development but especially those of you who are in america today uh, would would know this you know somehow better than than other people uh, we are comfortable and more relaxed knowing that the number the 254 number or a number that has been issued by our own agents and we're in control of we can easily confirm we can verify we are more comfortable as a government but i'm not saying that it is with this reason alone that for in the interim period we insist on 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 a 254 number or a number that we can we can easily um, trace but we have learned from experience going by the threats from the region al-qaeda al-shabaab and stuff like that we have learned from ex we, we have lessons that we have learned from when the, the when there was the london bridge bombing the king's cross bombing some time back immediately the reports that went out were that it's kenyans who were involved because there was mention of some kenyan passports you can see the way sometimes as Kenyans you are treated in some passports, either leaving or coming in or whatever you have traveled using Kenyan passports, which was not the case in the past because some people have created and made our documents look like they lack in integrity. So with those very many words, that is one of the considerations because we are trying to convince the rest of the world that our documents are not very, very easily obtainable. Uh, I think that's that's uh, what I would like to add, but it doesn't it doesn't say anything very different from what Mr. Ndegwa has said. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Gerald and uh, John. And uh, so I hand over to you, uh, uh, Mr. Zandet. And uh, we request that uh, you know we be allowed to leave at our own pleasure because there's still quite a number of events post Jamhuri. Even the ambassador is actually hosting another one and probably might have time to join him. Uh, but thank you so much. It's uh, been a real, real pleasure. And we hope to do this again. Absolutely. I think I hope, uh, like you said, we will want to uh, have you back again uh, when uh, we have another event. Uh, I have your email, I have your phone number, I have uh, Dr. I mean, uh, Degwa, and a house for the ambassador. So if anybody has a question, uh, you can put it on the chat or you can email it to me. Uh, then I'm sure we're gonna combine those questions and then send them to you uh, for you to address them. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I think for now, I wanna uh, hand over the program to Mercy. Uh, just also to let you know, uh, for everybody else, we want you to stick around. Uh, this group have been working so hard uh, uh, throughout the year, doing great things in the community, uh, even in our programs, in our events. Uh, but uh, more importantly, is building the leaders that we want to see in the next years to come. And I think the support of the parents, the support of uh, every adult in our community is a great thing. Uh, we want to see that in the next couple of years, uh, the things that we invest, we're, we're investing now, we're planting right now, we'll be able to see the fruits of it uh, in, the next couple, in the next couple of years. Uh, like Ambassador said, uh, some of the students that are, you see them here, five years ago, we took them to the Kenya, to the embassy in, uh, in the DC. They met with Ambassador Gidai, and they also visited the White House. And because of that, uh, passion that they were able to see. Some of them, they were asking, how can I be an ambassador to Kenya when I grew up? And I've seen, I see a couple of ambassadors in uh, this forum. 
uh, which I see Stephanie will be, he has a great potential to be an ambassador of Kenya in, in a couple of years down. And uh, we look back and see what we're doing right now to see that that's the, what we invested that is able to yield uh, some fruits down the line. Uh, for now, I, I think we will recognize a couple of them. So I would want you to stick around. If you can, there is a number I see on the chat. You can support them with donation, $5, $10, whatever it is. There are some stuff there, but they'll be ruffling. So give, give, give them support and, uh, and, and I'm sure that they would really, it will really shape their future tomorrow. So over to you, Masi. Thank you so much, Jeff, and also to the people who talked. Um, next, we're gonna have Anne Sankale. She's gonna be talking about the raffle. So Anne. Okay, um, as you have seen through the chat, we have been giving you um, our cash apps and our Venmos and our GoFundMe. So we have, if I can present right now, we have for our raffles, we have these items. We have Ceramac um, rhinos, we have two wooden um, spoons and forks. We have those um, made, um, animals, the rhinos. We also have a very special plate. This um, is the only one that we have. So if you want to get your hands on it, then you can pay for it in the auction. And we also have four um, wood, um, wooden frames for photos. And we have various um, bracelets that are um, for other, from another African foundation. And we have so many of these braided, um, nice rhinos and bags and cars. We have a lot of those. So do not be afraid to go and put tickets, $5 for each ticket and $5 for each ticket. And if you want to have more tickets, then you can pay more so that we can put you, and then you can probably have a more, of a way to actually get it, more of a way to win the raffle. We will have 10 um, winners, and if you still want the items that you raffled for, then you can pay for them in the auction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Um, So Faiza, is she in here? Um, okay, I think that will be the next part where we'll be doing the uh, recognition of some of the youth uh, that have been doing great work uh, with us. Um, and and I, I, what I understand from you is that uh, people don't just send their money on the cash up. Uh, and then uh, some of those items uh, you will be able to, uh, whatever you win, uh, Either you're around, are you going to be able to deliver to them or are you going to be able to ship? Because I see there are some people from DC. I know Jared want to win something. Uh, how are you going to deliver to him or are you going to ship it? Are we, are we shipping somebody to? You can, send, <laughs> you can send your email with the cash out money that you send to Stephanie, or you can just drop your address in the chat and then we can save it for you for whatever you, whatever you buy in the auction or whatever your raffle price is. Um, I think the number would be good if you, if you, the whoever is sending, they have a number, then whoever wins, they can contact him with the number and then they can get their addresses. That might be easier. Uh, okay, I think the next part I will, uh, uh, is.